All right. Uh, Hello, alaikum kilaikum. We are here to learn about the Hazaras. Okay. So before we begin, we will have an introduction on who we are. So let me just get back to the PowerPoint. Okay. So, um, okay. So for me, I am uh, Hamas Benati. I am a software developer as well as a mixed uh, reality developer. And I have my co-founder over here. She will be talking about herself in a bit. I just want to say about the um, Metavera community. It is a metaverse community here in the Middle East where we build and learn together uh, about the Metaverse. And yeah, I shall hand it on to my co-founder. Uh, I am Maryam Al-Amiri, first graduate from XCP in computer science, security and forensic. Also, uh, I'm a co uh, coding ambassador here at Coders HQ and co-founder of the Metaverum community. Okay, so later on we will discuss more about Coders HQ. Okay, so let's start about the Metaverse. So, what comes in mind when we say the word of the Metaverse? So, I need to scan. And what's your answer? Anything, Arabic. <laughs> 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 So if you feel it's difficult to scan, you can't say it. Let's do it the زين يلا جاوبوني انتم شو هو شو هو الميتافيرس؟ يوم احنا نقول الميتافيرس وات كم يو مايند؟ ايوه ايوه يا يا وي كان سي ذا يب اوكي كول اتس نوت شوينج Okay, so we will be looking at the results that you guys have uh, sent in. Nice. And then sharing the screen from there. Nice. Okay. Did I copy it wrong? Yes, I did. Okay. And we shall share that now. Okay, so this should be shared. Make it go back to this. We are facing a, bit, a little bit of technical difficulty, <laughs> like normal when you have uh, live workshops. Apologies for that, but okay, it's fine. Uh, can connect it over here, please. And then the first and can use it now. It is not being used. Not available. Not available. 
Can you remove the cable and put it back in? Uh, we're up. Okay, so apologies for the ones online. We're facing a bit of difficulty here in the physical area. I'll just. Huh? I mean. Okay. I guess we can see it online, but over here, for some reason, it is not showing. So we can uh, say it out loud if, if you'd like. Let's see the answers. Try to drag the left or the right. This is the actual path. Oh, wait. Do you think that the display is? Oh, okay. okay, 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 okay. There we go. There we go. Nice. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Tell me your answer. The Arabic translation, right? The three D Yeah, it contains of three D models. Well, the models. Yeah, it can. You can use the models that are coming from Metaverse. Yeah, you can use the Bitcoin. New words, okay. Um, future of programming, digital world, user interact with uh, computer. It's not, yeah, not computer. The user will be interacting with a 3D digital object, object, okay. Artificial intelligence, okay. So let's see the slides. So the metaverse, it's, uh, we can say it is, as uh, describe a virtual environment uh, where physical and digital objects can be simulated coexist. In other words, where is, we can say it's a virtual space where people can interact with each other and with a 3D object. Okay, and it's have we can say it have three components, which is mixed realities, virtual realities, and augmented realities. So let's start with the virtual realities. So here we have a physical world and digital world. The virtual reality only it has virtual world. يعني مثلاً إذا لبسنا نظارات the virtual realities ما راح نشوف العالم بالحقيقة. We'll not see the real world. Only we will see the the virtual world. يعني إحنا بنكون الحقيقة بس العالم الافتراضي. العالم الحقيقي ما راح يكون موجود. يعني ما راح نشوف العالم اللي إحنا فيه. خلاص مش عالم. تمام آه، نفس بعض الالعاب اللي موجوده اللي خاصه بس النظاره وندش في في الالعاب اوكي سو هير الفيرتشوال رياليتي بعدين عندنا وات از الفيرتشوال رياليتي اوكي از كمبيوتر جنريتد سيميليشن كت اب فروم ذا ريل وورلد مثل ما قلت ان احنا ما نشوف العالم الحقيقي بعدين ات 3 دي ديجيتالايز انفايرمنت احنا نصمم الميتافيرس ولا الفيرتشوال رياليتي العالم الافتراضي نستخدم ال 3 دي موديل Acting using the VR headset, okay? لأن عندنا أنواع headset عندنا VR mixed reality and augmented reality. هني عندنا the video عن the the VR headset. شو هني دخلنا اللقطة خلاص نشوف العالم الاختراعي نشوف العالم. بعدين عندنا the augmented reality. تذكرون لعبة بيكم اند جو؟ وان اكزامبل اوف الاجمنتد رياليتي. سو ات از ريل وورد، ريل وورد يعني شوف العالم الحقيقي بس وي يوزنج الاليمنتس اللي هم ال سم يوزنج ال سم 3 دي اوبجكت يعني البيكم اند جو كنا احنا نستخدم الايباد والايباد وكنا ندور على البيكم هذا احنا نسميه اوجمنتد رياليتي يكون العالم الحقيقي بس معاه 3 دي اوبجكت. Okay. So we can access music, smartphone, tablet, and headphones. Yep. Do you have any questions? Okay. See here we have a video about augmented reality. Coming 
ito. Okay. Uh, the last one we have the mixed reality. The mixed reality is mixed between the physical world and digital world. I mean, I just saw the that we have the drama, and I can see that this world, I can put the glass, but it's only a 3D object. This 3D object, I can adjust them. I can manipulate it. I zoom and zoom out. I can I can do anything. For example, I am here, Rama, in the pool. She can uh, enter me here with the mix here. So it is mixed between the physical world and the digital world, but it is not augmented reality. Okay? Sure, the augmented reality is the mix. لا الميكس ريالتي انت تقدر تتحكم فيه اكثر يعني خلاص انت بتلبس النظاره وانا اقدر ادخل راما ادش وياها مين تكون هي قدام بس الاوجمنتد ريالتي انا بستخدم التابلت بس بشوف الاوبجكت ما بقدر اتحكم فيه وايد مثل الميكس ريالتي واقدر يعني حتى حتى يعني مثلا سو سوينا كتطبيق انه مثلا نشتغل على طياره نركبها نقدر نصممها ونركبها مع بعض في الميكس ريالتي بعد نشتغل عليها احنا بعد نركب التاير ونبدل التاير ونبدل فهذا الفرق بين المسريات والاوجمنتد ريالتي. ما فهمت؟ اوكي، الاوجمنتد ريالتي اوكي ان انت تكون عندك العالم الحقيقي بس يكون في نفس البوكا منجو كنا احنا نستخدم الايباد ولا الايباد ندور على البوكا فيطلع لنا ال 3 دي اوبجكت بس انا ما اقدر وايد اتحكم فيه. بس المكس ريالتي انا اقدر اتحكم فيه لان شو انا امس النظاره بيطلع لي الاوبجكت قدامي انا اقدر اتحكم فيه اكبر صغرى اركب عليه فهمتوا؟ حتى يعني مثلا يوم مثلا يبنون بيت فانا اقدر ادش البيت هالسامبل بالمكس ريالتي اقدر ادش اشوف الغرف كيف راح تكون وغيره قبل البناء فهاي استخدم لها المكس ريالتي يخص انه واحد في نظاره وواحد في نظاره هي بعد الاوجمنت ريالتي لسه كان سمارت فون ثابت اما الفيرت والمكس لازم النظاره اوكي هي هني عندنا اكزامبل على المكس ريالتي شوفوا شوف العالم الحقيقي بس يصير حركة وتشوف ربيعة وياه داخل الميتين ويشتغلون مع بعض شغلون على الحركة نفس الوقت بس هي بس هو فمثال وهو شخص فمثال. So now Rama, نشوف let's see the metaverse experience. Thank you. Hello, everyone, again. So, uh, okay, let's test your understanding so far about mixed reality, augmented reality, and VR. A little note over here that the first two people on the leaderboard will get to try the HoloLens first. So, a hint you would need to answer both quickly and correctly at the same time. So this is the QR code. It's a different one. Okay, we'll be looking at the answers and the leaderboard. What? The code is not working. 
Okay. It says it's not open. Okay. Okay. Uh, give me one second then. I'll just share my screen on this one. Okay, so this is the screen so far. Yes. Now, we already went over that, not sure. I'm gonna present the code again, just once more. Or not. Okay. I think we already have enough people. We have around 50 people, so we will begin. So, the first question is we need to answer as quick as possible. You can see real world in VR. Is it true or false? No. <laughs> and then everyone has voted. Let's see. Okay. Next. Sorry, there is another question. Okay, now we will go to the next question. Oh, and for the first one, the correct answer was false. Why? Because when you do put on the headset, you cannot see anything in the real world, and the only thing that you can see are computer computerized virtual virtual objects. Next question is. 55 players ready. You need to answer as fast as possible to get points. The elements that make mixed reality unique from augmented reality. Okay, so I, I, I'm going to explain what holographic displays are. Holographic is basically when you can see the object in 3D in front of you. 
And then the projection is it projecting in the real world. And C is complete virtual environment display. So me explaining the first and the second kind of gives you a hint, and then you need to decide whether or not C is applicable for mixed reality. <laughs> okay, so the correct answer is that mixed, what makes mixed reality unique to augmented reality is the fact that you can have virtual objects in real life, you can see them as 3D. They look like they are real. You can you can have an immersive experience with uh, these objects. Okay, now let's look at the leaderboard. Okay, we have Hamad first, and then okay, wow, yes, we have Hamad as the first person, and then Abdullah, uh, Abdullah. Okay, so can I have a raise of hands of who you guys are? Okay, all right, cool. So you guys will be the first people to try out uh, the holidays. Perfect. Now we can move on to the next section. Uh, exit full screen. And okay, perfect. Moving on to the next section, there is a question where it's like, how can you create a mixed reality application, augmented reality, or VR apps? So to do that, and of course, an example, as Hariam has already mentioned, is the Pokemon Go game, which is an augmented reality application. Now, how would you do that? First things first, of course, you need to brainstorm the idea, that, the app idea that you want to make. So whether that be mixed reality, VR, or augmented reality. And then, based on that, you would have to choose the device that you want to export that idea to. Whether that idea, you want to export it to a phone, whether that phone be Android or iOS, or you want to export it to a headset, like the uh, HoloLens 2 by Microsoft and the mm, Headset Quest. So after you choose the device that you want to export it to, and usually for uh, Android and iOS, those would be the uh, augmented reality applications. And then for uh, the headsets, that would be the mixed reality apps or the virtual reality applications. Because again, once you put the headset, uh, that would be true for the headset quest, where once you put the headset, you cannot see anything in the real world unless you want to. You, you, there is a feature over there that you can enable to see the real world. Anyways. Now, after you choose the device, you want to choose your game engine. Now, what is a game engine? We will get to that in a bit. Now, the two most famous game engines out there, they are Unity and the Unreal Engine. You might have heard about them. And now we shall explain what a game engine is. Now, a game engine is a, a, a software that provides developers with a set of tools and features that will help you and allow you to build the application how you want. Now, this looks a bit complicated for a person that doesn't have experience with it, but this is the um, Unity game engine, and this is how it looks like. Now, to further explain what how you can think about this, let's imagine this game engine as a word Document, which I'm sure most of you or all of you are familiar with, right? So how can you relate a game engine to a Word document? Well, we would look at the, the scene over here as the main page that you would see when you, uh, when you open up the Word document, you see like a, a, a 
a white blank page, right? And then when you keep on typing in information, you would see that result of what you are inputting, what you are typing onto the screen. And that is exactly, I would say, what this over here, the middle part that you see on the Unity page. Essentially what that means, when you write in the code, how you can see the effect of that code or how that code will perform, you can see that over here. All right, cool. Now, for the next part, over there to the right on the uh, inspector tab, that is what we call it. Over there, you can basically um, like change the position of the objects, change the size of the objects, which is kind of the same when you when you want to think about it back onto the Word document, where you can increase the size of the font, you can decrease it, and so on and so forth, right? And then we would think about the bottom part as you having a lot of tools, because again, we said that the game engine, you want to think about it as a software, as a software or a template that you guys have a lot of tools in. Where can you find these tools? You can find them in the packages over here. Okay, so kind of think of them as how you have multiple tabs on the Word document, you would have multiple tools over here. So I guess that kind of made you guys understand the game engine better. Do you guys have any questions so far? Okay, so moving on, once you have chosen the game engine that will allow you to have a list of tools or that will provide you with a list of tools that will allow you to build your application, you're going to have to import additional SDKs. SDKs are software development kits. And again, what that means is you are just importing more features, you are importing more tools that will allow you to create those augmented reality applications. Okay. For example, we have the mixed reality toolkit by Microsoft. Now, this is like a user interface um, SDK that you can use, where you can create multiple menus and enable for you to interact with the uh, with the digital objects that you put in your application. For example, these are a few examples of what mixed reality would provide you with. So it would provide you with an object manipulator script or like a uh, code basically that would enable you to resize uh, the digital object that you want. And then the second one where you want to create menus and then you can you know, press on menus, interact with them as you can see over there. The third feature over here, we have the bounce control, where you can see a bounce control around the object, and then you can resize. And now the last one is the hand menu, which again, it is a menu which you will be interacting with at the uh, when you're using the Hol HoloLens. Now, moving on, the final step, once you have developed your applications, you want to build and deploy that app to the device that you would like, again whether that be the HoloLens, Android, or iOS. And now let's hear from our test's experience with mixed reality. Starting off with you. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So we have a guest speaker over here. We have actually two uh, on, uh, here physically, and we have two people remotely. They will be introducing themselves in a bit. I just want to uh, give you guys a little overview about what they're doing. So basically, a few days back, they were participating in a Metaversity Hackathon competition. So they had to uh, learn how to use the HoloLens. They had to learn how to use MRTK and then build their own mixed reality applications in, in only two days and then deploy that application onto the HoloLens headset. That hackathon happened at uh, Khalifa University. And then we're going to have our first guest speaker. Let me just open up the PowerPoint. Do you have the video? Or do you want me to share it with you? Uh, you can share you. it. That would be nice. It's fine. Maybe after we can put it all together. It's fine. OK. 
Uh, give me one second. Okay. I have another. I'll have to share it from my laptop. So you're going to bring it Okay, we will be presenting in a bit. And okay, guys, let us welcome now our guest speaker over here. Please introduce yourself and go ahead. Hello, guys, how are you? Uh, I'm fine too. And I'm going, as Rama said, I'm going to show you the project that I developed during this hackathon. So this project was made by my partner, Sara from Arain University and me from Khalifa University. Uh, to start with, I would like to share with you. Oh, what's happening? No, 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 it's fine. Oh. They cannot see. In the... Okay, I'll just do this. Perfect. I would like to share with you one of my favorite quotes since I started university. It's from Isaac Asimov, and it says, "Science can amuse and fascinate us all, but it is engineering that changes the world." But how do we teach engineering? How do we share knowledge to students? Well, the first way to do it. It's my practice to tell students, okay, put your hands on to demonstrate your knowledge. Unfortunately, this kind of uh, practical approach is not suitable for all the fields. Uh, I already mentioned engineering, but this also happens in fields like physics, biology, and medicine. So the same questions, the same question arises again. How do we teach or how do we learn these kind of fields? And maybe more importantly, how do we do it in an engaging way? Well, the answer to these questions is by doing a simulation. Because with simulation, you have uh, different advantages, like uh, visual learning. Many people can retain information in a better way by doing it visually. Simulations are also easy to set up. And they are easy to repeat uh, with different uh, conditions to do several experiments with different conditions and maybe more important simulations help you to save time and money now in the specific field of electronics when building a circuit for the first time it could be overwhelming i don't know what is your background guys but when i just started my my bachelor's when you see uh, a circuit I was overwhelmed to see all the little components there and then trying to uh, translate these components onto the diagram and they don't look al alike in the schematics. So that's a problem. And that's the reason why I was proposing our application, the Holoboard, which is, uh, was proposed to, uh, as an, you know, an innovative educational tool to teach students how to do basic basic circuits and as i said this solution was proposed as was thought as something that i would have liked to have when i was a student so uh, drama yeah the video do you have it or do you want me to the video so just uh plug in oh yes. just 
But this is not mine. Oh. Okay, so give us a few minutes as we are putting in the video. In the meantime, I'd like to uh, ask a question. And with a raise of hands, I'd like you to tell you to tell me what is the main difference between virtual reality versus augmented and mixed reality. With a show of hands, anyone? We have, we've been talking about it since the very beginning. What is the main, main, main difference between virtual reality, where everything is virtual, and kind of sudden, and then mixed reality and augmented reality? Projection does not include the reality on the virtual reality. Exactly. So virtual reality would be including, it would not include the real world, it would only be including the virtual world. While the rest would be including components from the real world, right? So, go ahead. Let's Well, anyway, you guys, uh, no, that's fine. have any of you built electronic circuits in a breadboard? There. All of them? Or like, at least you have seen any of your colleagues in university trying to do these uh, little circuits, trying to connect LEDs and resistors, have you? Yes. Yes? Okay, so this would be uh, like familiar to you. So this is a video I was recording directly from the from the HoloLens using my the app that I and Sarah developed. So the first thing you see, one of the tools that we were using during this application was the the palm menu. As soon as you show your palm to the HoloLens, it will pop up the menu. And the first menu that we were showing was this unit menu, where you can uh, select the unit you want to work with. And each unit was focused on the different components, on the different electronic components like resistor, capacitor, sensors, and so on and so forth. But for this uh, hackathon, we just decided to do the resistors thing, the, the resistor unit. So you can click on each of the buttons, but nothing will happen for for the buttons in red. And then when we go to the resistors, the next thing that you see is the, the lesson itself. You can choose which circuit you want to build. And in this case, I'm going to show you three of them, the resistor, the potentiometer, and pull up and pull down resistor. So the first thing that happens when you select a unit, uh, a lesson, is a breadboard with all the components you need to build the circuit. And, uh, well, the thing the user has to do is to, to, to take all the components and put them in the target position. So for example, here you see the battery and the target position would be this uh, golden ghost. Also, uh, the palm of menu now would be a component box menu. And we wanted to replicate the same way, uh, the same interaction when you are building your circuit. When you pick the component from, the, from, the, from your physical component box, so we wanted to do it in a more intuitive, intuitive way. way. Um, and also, we put four, four option menus, and this, this, uh, these buttons were used to interact with the, with the board itself. So the first one is the, the manipulation. With this button, you could move, rotate, and scale the, the breadboard, so to be working it more easily to the convenience, like you could have it a very big board, for example, to see. So something that I was missing, that I missed to say is that uh, the good thing for this simulation is that you don't run the, the risk, for example, to do a short circuit. And when you finalize your circuit, you could do the physical one. So you finish the assembly on the, on the virtual one, and then you go to your real breadboard and do the same assembly and it will work. 
So in the case when you finish the, the breadboard and you are trying to replicate it in the real one, you could scale it up to see exactly in which hole you have to put a certain pin. So that's the reason we, we decided to put the manipulation. Then the task description button, the second one, is used to give the user the description of the task and also to show the diagram. So for example, here it's already displayed, is the one in the back. And it gives a brief description of the, of the circuit itself and how the schematic looks. And you can en enable and disable it. Then the third button is to show help and tips. For example, uh, hey, you should be aware of the polarity of the LED because as you all know, if you connect the LED in the opposite way, it will not light up. The same for all the components. Uh, some recommendations, how it works, what is it for. And uh, the last button was to display components information using the tool tips. And I show you in a moment. So basically here I'm uh, showing all the, all the activities of the button. Here I am scaling up, scaling down, move it around. Um, and then you start building the, the circuit, like placing all the components on their tar target represented by the ghost. So I believe over here you are trying to uh, hide some a bulb, right? Yes. Is so the, that is the battery. Is the most, uh, this one, the first one is the most uh, simple circuit, just a LED, a resistor, and a battery. And when you finish, you, you press uh, play the simulation and voila, you have the, the left on. And then I move to the second circuit. Like I don't have to show you all the assembly, but maybe we can move to till the end. So in the second one, I was changing the, yes. I was changing the resistor by a potentiometer. And when you change the angle of the wiper, you change the intensity of the light. So then, uh, you would say that basically the application would reflect how your electric circuit would actually perform in, in real life, right? Exactly. Yeah. So um, one, one thing that we were thinking about it is uh, Rama was saying that usually when you work with mixed reality is that you try to re replicate the virtual object, the real object into a virtual twin. Our approach was to do exactly the opposite, to take this virtual object and replicate it in our real twin. So as I said, once you finish here, if you build the same exact circuit in real life, you will have the same behavior. And well, you might be wondering like, hey, why should I need this very complex uh, application when I can go to YouTube, watch videos, and they will show me how to do it. And well, you can do it with this kind of techniques, but the truth is that with YouTube or with normal simulators, with software that do these kind of, of things as well, sometimes it can be felt a bit impersonal, like uh, you don't have that interaction. And uh, well, this is the, the tool tips. You can display the information. But anyway, I was saying, uh, with these kind of things, you don't get the real feeling of doing it. And if you have an error, it's very hard to spot where that error is. So this is the kind of things we were trying to fix with our, with our approach. Tell me. Right. So then uh, I would say, like, maybe you guys were trying to make uh, the whole building and uh, electrics are getting more immersed. And I believe you you also mentioned how these uh, or this electric circuit could also potentially in the future, uh, where the professor would be explaining how to build the circuit, and then everyone else would be looking at it and seeing how to do so as well. Exactly. So that was the part of working with the metaverse. Exactly. Like the, all the students, all the professor were looking at the same board, let's say a board like two meters wide, and everybody would see 
where the components were connected and uh, maybe explaining why it works, how it works. And then at home, a student would replicate that board that the professor made into a real, into a real one. So this one is the last one, the pull up and pull down. In normal state, the pull up is uh, lit up. And when you press the button, it turns off. And the opposite for the pull down resistor. It's off in normal state. And when you press the button, it comes uh, on. I believe like those specific uh, details would be more like known by people who are actually in the field. Yeah. Yeah, they actually be field. Exactly. And well, the last thing that we implemented was uh, some voice commands, like simple voice commands, but it's one of the things that you can do with the HoloLens. For example, here I'm explaining in the video, I'm talking and I'm saying uh, show components information and then the the tool tips come up and when I say hide the components information, it goes off. And uh, I think that's it from my side. Well, just the components like uh, right now in the circuits that I show you, the components are already there. You just have to place them in the target position. But you can also take components from the component box and place them. So that was also thought as one of the future improvements to work with the components that actually you are instantiating as in the real world. All right, so, so just to, uh, I guess, uh, highlight on a very important point that you mentioned. Did I miss something? No, you did not, but there is a very important point that you did highlight where you can uh, interact with your mixed reality applications when you are using the MRTK toolkit. Uh, either using your hands where you, uh, as you have seen, where you would like pick up objects and place them, or you can use your voice where, uh, as you have seen, information would be displayed after you uh, stay at the map. Exactly, it's to make it more immersive. Exactly. And in some cases, your hands are busy and you cannot do the gesture to do the the placement, so it's easier to do it with voice commands, like uh, show me this thing or instantiate something. Yep. So it's exactly. very important to use them. Yeah, so that is it for this part. Do you guys have any questions for our uh, guest speaker? Recommendations as well. <laughs> Recommendations. Oh yeah, like as in um, probably features or whatnot that you can possibly expand on in the future with your application? <laughs> One thing we were wor working on was like selecting the actual value of the components, for example, to pick the color of the bands of, on the resistor and how to, that would uh, affect the, the behavior of the circuit. Yep. Uh, but yet, yeah, as we said, this project was only for today, so we had to focus on no worries. more okay. general things. Perfect. Uh, Thank you very much, Juan. Now we will move on. Yes. Now we will move on to our next. Just let me let me finish the yes. presentation. Oh, oh, you're not done with the presentation. Okay, apologies for that. Uh, yes. Share your screen. Give us one second. Okay, so oh no, it's fine, it's fine. Just to finish, guys. Um, as I've been mentioning, this application was thought as a tool to develop intuition needed to do basic circuitry. But of course, at some point, you you would have to face the real one the real uh, implementation. But this kind of application will help you to develop this intuition. Um, and well, we are very passionate about this mixed reality world, all the things that are happening. And we are sure, we are certain after this project that with the HoloLens 2, you can bring your ideas to reality, to the mixed reality. And well, just to leave you guys, I want to share you one last quote that fits like a glove to the spirit of the of the 
of the hackathon, but also to this to this era, to this educational era using uh, technology. This one is from Carl Sagan, and it says, in a world of transition, students and teachers both need to teach themselves one essential skill, learning how to learn. Perfect. And now we will move on to our next speakers. I shall join them in onto the screen. They are coming in uh, remotely. Harvara, are you there? Would you be able to open your camera or? Perfect, okay. I'm gonna put you on into the screen and Havanash, the, uh, the floor is yours. Just, uh, can you unmute yourself? I wanna see whether or not we can hear you. Hello. Perfect, all right, let's go. Yes. Hi everyone. Can you share this, present the slides fully, I guess? Uh, they are there. We can already see your slides. Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Avinash Kewali. I am from NYU Abu Dhabi and I'm a rising junior studying computer science. Barbara, you can introduce yourself. Hello everyone, my name is Barbara uh, and I'm uh, also a computer science major at uh, NYU Abu Dhabi. Are you guys like m m moving the screen? Oh, I was share uh, slide oh, okay. Two. okay. Can you see okay, it? Perfect. perfect, yes, perfect. So yes, so, uh, in this hackathon, we met we made an XR application called Zero Gravity. And before diving deep into that, let's get into some background information, you know, about the importance of this kind of stuff for education. And um, so if I go to the, I'm gonna change slides. Okay, yes. So UAE has expressed, you know, a strong interest in advancing a space sector. So currently they have, have current initiatives such as the Emirates Mars mission, the Hope Probe that aims to study the climate and the atmosphere of Mars. And, you know, UAE is collaborating with many universities across the UAE to build space centers and planetary science centers and the nation aims to become a space education hub for all. So, you know, to advance the space sector, it's important, you know, we advance the education infrastructure to teach this kind of concepts and a space uh, technology. So to do that, uh, it's difficult because recreating space conditions on Earth is a challenge. You know, for example, you might heard about zero gravity or microgravity where everything floats in the air. You cannot do that on Earth, right? And things like simulating orbit, orbital trajectories, it's very hard to visualize those kind of stuff in 2D screens. And what students and learners are using right now currently is like, uh, before that, yes. Uh, so recreating space condition. So how that, that is done in Earth is, you know, uh, people are using high speed aircrafts to create zero gravity for a few seconds. It's very expensive. And organizations like NASA are using underwater simulations and vertical drop facilities to recreate this, you know, space conditions. But it's very expensive. Also teaching, you know, about zero gravity stuff, it's very challenging. It, it's highly unfeasible, you know, to use this kind of methods for that. So what people are limited to is like using um, 2D images, videos, playing 2D games to understand themselves about, to understand about zero gravity. And this is very 
there is no uh, experiential aspect to it. It's very disconnected from the actual experience. You're not, you you don't get the opportunity to actually live in that experience and see the objects float around you. So that's why we created an application called Zero Gravity, which combines the scientific principles with mixed reality and augmented reality, and where the students and the learners can interact with zero gravity scenarios anywhere on Earth. So uh, talking about the features, so, so there's like uh, four modules. In the first module, you become a space mechanic where you, you, where you design, where you assemble the space components of a Mars rover in zero gravity. And in the second one, you interact with fluid simulation. Imagine water in zero gravity. It floats in the air. It's not like here on Earth. So the properties and the characteristics of those that fluids and water are different, you know, and you need to visualize that. So you can do this uh, in this application. Same goes with fire. It's different on space. So you can understand how fire behaves in space. And also in the fourth module, you have uh, you can visualize about gravities of different planet, and we also look at uh, we'll look into that demo also to help you understand what it actually means. And uh, so, mixed reality is an exciting technology, emerging technology. It allows you know it's it allows more accessibility than those kind of sophisticated sophisticated technology that's used right now. To do this kind of stuff and it also offers immersive interactivity which helps you and this enhances you your understanding about gravity which results in a enhanced learning outcomes and also motivates you to pursue uh, studies in like space related subjects so my friend is going to talk more about the user interface and our holographic guide so to improve the user experience, we also decided to integrate holographic guide named Salama. She gives clear instructions for the user how to navigate and interact with the application uh, throughout the each module. And also she gives uh, scientific information and necessary background about zero gravity properties. And additionally, since our holographic gu uh, guide has voice feature, it helps us to accommodate students with uh, learning um, special needs in learning. So our first module, uh, as uh, Avinash already mentioned, is uh, machine assembly, where the users are asked to uh, assemble the space rover. And since it's in the zero gravity, the components are floating freely. And the user uh, has to take the object and place it to, the, to its designated uh, place. And once it's done, uh, there is a pop-up window uh, with the description of uh, this object, which Salama also reads to the user. The next module is a fluid simulation, where users can understand how the gravity uh, changes the behavior of fluids uh, in space. So first, the user um, can spawn the water and see how it behaves uh, on Earth. And then uh, there is a button that changes um, that changes the gravity uh, that changes the gravity off, so that the water also changes behavior. While Salama also explains why is it happening. The third one is fire simulation, um, where the user can see how the behavior of the flames change in the zero gravity. So the first user is asked to light up the candle with the torch and then uh, turn on the gravity on and off to see the difference, while Salama explains why is it happening as well. And the last module that we developed was Planet's Gravity, where the user can pick the object and drop on the car and see uh, uh, how the different uh, see the differences in gravity forces across different planets. And here we have five planets, uh, and user can switch between them using the menu. So let's uh, look into the video now. I will uh, stop sharing this and. Uh share the video.
Okay. Uh, uh, just l let me know when you are sharing it, because I think I have to. Yes, I am uh, sharing it in the backstage. Okay. I am going to include it on the stream. And Welcome to Zero Gravity, an incredible world where you decide whether gravity exists or not. My name is Salama, and I'll be your guide on this gravity-defying adventure. We have prepared four modules for you, each offers different activities. Before we begin, let me explain how you can control the gravity settings. There is a button on each level where you can switch the gravity on and off. Once you are ready, press the button of the module you want to experience from the menu. So we have four uh, levels, in which three is in a complete uh, microgravity environments, and the user can learn about different things in zero gravity or microgravity environment. And we have incorporated a holographic guide to help our help the user navigate around the levels. So my team is going to talk more about the user experience and the holographic ride. So her name is Salama and she helps the user to navigate through the application. At the beginning of each module she gives the instruction how to interact with, each, uh, with this module. Also she gives necessary scientific uh, information uh, about zero gravity properties that are addressed in the specific module and at the end as the user completes the module she summarizes the experience for, for the user. Yes, so let's move on to the space assembly module. So here Uh, is the video working on your end? Because it, it kind of... Paused, paused, yeah. Yeah. Uh, paused. If you'd like to... Uh, like working just, now? Yeah, just do it again. So, is it working? No, it is not. It is paused. Maybe play it again. Play it again. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, but basically, the uh, videos that you guys are seeing over there is the application that um, they have built in the hackathon, and they basically were able to uh, r record the experience, record the application experience using the HoloLens headset. And rigid body along with Unity, Unity. Uh physics so you can see just goes it has some linear drag and angular drag for it to stop there's a bit of lag i don't know why is it lag on our end or is it i have no idea okay uh, this pauses uh okay let me try again Or I can just share my screen, I guess. Okay. Entire screen, yeah. Yeah, maybe if you can share the entire screen, I guess that would be fine. Yeah. Working? Uh, yes. Can you play the video? Perfect. But can you hear the sound? It is okay if uh, you two guys would like to explain. Like okay, okay, sure, I'll, I'll do that. So as you yeah. can see, you can uh, you can see the parts flying around, and then you grab the part, and then you put it in the right spot, and you learn about that part while in zero gravity. So this is the you know it feels like you're a space mechanic. And you can learn about uh, different uh, scenarios in zero gravity, which would be hard to recreate here on Earth. So that's the one of the module. And uh, the third module is the fire uh, module. As you can see, it's like you have to grab the torch, light the candle. Uh, right now you can see the gravity is on, so it's like a normal Earth condition. 
but as soon as you turn off the gravity, then you can see like how high far, you know, like changes in the absence of gravity. While Salama explains, why is it happening? Yeah, so maybe you could explain that last part. So over there about what happened to the uh, handle, the light. Sorry. Uh, okay, so that maybe uh, you could like re-explain the last part where uh, you guys were t turning, turning off. The, yeah. So just a comparison, because that wasn't very clear yeah. okay. over here. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, Barbara, maybe you can explain this. Yeah. So just a before and after kind of thing. So this was the before when uh, gravity was turned on. And then once the gravity was turned off, that is when you see the after result and you see how the flame basically collapsed. Yes, and Salama also explains that the shape of uh, the, the fire flame changes uh, because, uh, because of the gravity force. So yeah, and different other properties are changing because of the uh, oxygen, lack of the oxygen in space. Yep, yep, okay. Can move on to the next demo, yeah. Yeah, here the the user can grab the ball, and based on the planet that the user changes, the gravitational force is different. So the car is damaged based on the gravitational force of this specific planet. And once you do it and you experience experience it you can understand where how the gravity uh, across different planets is different so when you try jupiter for example the car will be damaged more while i don't know neptune for example it will be slightly damaged so when you actually experience this you can learn about different gravitational forces on different planets yeah and um Basically, over here, you, you guys were um, showing us an immersive experience on how, depending on where you are on Earth, depending on the uh, gravitational force you have, the uh, objects around you would react and perform differently, right? And we cannot really, um, like, replicate that in real life very easily. So then having a mixed reality application where we can actually see what happens in a very, uh, like, not, not that expensive way, it is, yeah, <laughs> very good. Perfect. And just to mention these guys with this project they want, it's yeah. the first time I'm seeing it and I'm amazed. <laughs> it's very, very nice and I really like the... The fact that they have Salama, like an AI helping people. Yeah. So that's a really nice addition. Okay, I guess that is the last demo for this, right? Yes. Uh... No, where are you? I think he <laughs> closed the tab by mistake. It's fine. We, uh, also, okay. we also have some slides left, but I'm not sure we'll go over them. But we can, I think. Okay. I think Avinash uh, had a slight technical error. <laughs> there we yeah. go. Welcome back, Avinash. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay. But yeah, that's. And um, just like to, you know, I'd like to like share a few slides about why is this, you know, important. Uh, Oh, sorry. Oh, my. Oh, this one. Uh, yeah. Uh, Share these. Google Slides and Google Slides. Yeah. 
Yeah, this one. Okay, we are waiting for the screen share. Perfect. Okay. So yes. Uh, I guess just go to the end. So just about uh, Barbara is going to explain about the potential, you know, expansion and how this could look in the future. And uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So first, first of all, uh, we can integrate large language models, as you all know, ChatGPT. So each student can get personalized assistance. And if they have questions, they can ask them and get real time feedback. Uh, also, we can uh, try to adjust the complexity level based on students' age level. And also change the curriculum such that we can cover as advanced topic, uh, topics as we want. And also, we can integrate assessment, assessment component to our application later. Yes. And uh, so, you know, this is an emerging technology. And this has all. This is already being used in like many universities, research institution. But for this purpose, not so much. That's why you know, even if you like decide to make this, uh, continue this forward, we plan to you know launch this in universities, space training centers, research institution here in the UAE, so we can advance the space sector even more by educating the people about this, you know, uh, sci uh, space stuff, even like properly with proper visualization. And it's an emerging market. It's actually a big market. Uh, it's com it comes under the e-learning market, which is like a $190 billion market. And the XR industry itself is a $9 billion market, which is, which is I don't know, it's doubling or quadrupling every year. And it's growing rapidly. And um, yeah, so it's a tremendous opportunity, you know, to be a part of uh, this uh, ac um, spatial computing platform and the metaverse. And this is our team. And thank you very much for listening to us. Thank you. That's perfect. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Avanish and Barbara, we are now going to move on to the next section. Some breath, guys. Go, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, Thank you. If you have any questions, you can ask. Yes. Oh, yeah. We have to answer. If you have any questions for them, they uh, did like do an amazing application in terms of how can you uh, replicate the behavior of less gravitational force. So if you have any questions, they are here to answer. Seeing that there are no questions, we are going to proceed with our slides. And here is a QR code that you can use to connect with the speakers. Uh, sorry, I did not put it on screen yet on the stream. Uh, this is a QR code that you can use to connect with our speakers who spoke with us today. So feel free to scan and connect with us on LinkedIn. Are you going to share the slides with us? Uh, everything will be, uh, well, the entire session right now is being uh, recorded and streamed on uh, e e YouTube. So if you want to return back to the slides, you, you totally can. I will share with you, I guess, the YouTube link at the very end. So you can refer back to that. All right. OK, so this is for the speakers. And then I will hand it on over to my co-founder, Mariam. Okay, so let me speak about project. 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 
انيشيتيف عن البرمجه عن الفرونت تكنولوجيز ودائما يكون عندنا يكون عندنا يكون عندنا ايفنتس يا ورك شوبس يا يكون عندنا هاكاثونز وايضا في دايم تايم نشتغل على بروجكتس ويا بارتنرز يعني يونا بارتنرز احنا نبغى بروجكت شغل اوكي نشتغل على البروجكت سو so, واي حد حاب يدش الكوميونتي مالنا كودرز اتش كيو في الانستغرام بس كودرز اتش كيو بتحطون الكوميونتي وعندنا بعد سكرول بتحط فيه كل المعلومات عن المقر والمقر هو تحت مكتب وزير الدوله للدخاء فاذا عندكم اي سؤال عن المقر So, um, as Mahir said, we're going to say XR, you're going to choose the first uh, letter, M, A, V, right? So, when we say XR, we mean yeah, I'm a virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality. So, that's X basically can be removed, but then we have to leave it. Exactly. I hope uh, that answers your question. Okay. يعني Okay. يعني في يعني في هذا هو 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 هلا هو ال most scenarios I would say لما هنا عم نستعمل virtual reality that one is mostly used إذا هنا مثلاً بدون like to play ألعاب هيك which is mostly how VR is being used right now so if you if you want to play any games then obviously لما أنت بتفتح على games on your laptop you would play you would see an entirely virtual environment صح so rather than you be using your keyboard you while you're playing you'd be using your head هلا الهيدسيت تبع الفي ار از نوت از اكسبنسيف ات ذا مومنت از مثلا ذا ميكست ريالتي هيدسيت سو وير لوكينج ات ذا فيرتشوال هيدسيت باي ذا يعني هيدسيت كوست از لايك اراوند 2000 اند يو كود فايند ات ات لايك 1700 سو ان كومباريزن اف يو ونت تو كومبير ذا هيدسيت تو يو مثلا بيرشيسينج ا نيو فون That is not that expensive, right? So in terms of VR, it is not that expensive for you to have and for you to experience. In terms of the mixed reality headsets, those are expensive. And um, when we're talking about so you can make it so the club is going to do what? No, مثلاً الجامعة أو المدارس they don't they don't want to. invest in buying a lot of headsets. But we have a lot of people who are going to buy iPad, or going to buy a lot of people, and see what the professor is doing. But the students are not going to share with the students. For example, if you want to talk to the students, you can be with the students and let them talk to them. They can. So, as I said, the applications that you are going to buy You can actually interact with the objects that are in the world. So, ما أنا والله يا ما you can interact with them using your mobile screen. يعني أنت فيك مثلاً حط مثل مثل ال شو اسمه ال application. Yes, Pokemon, right? أنت فيك مثلاً بتحط الطابة هيك and you you are basically interacting with them. هلا في you have Tools or features, hala, yani nijdeed. You can say you can actually interact with the object, yani ida. So it's under the jawal. The jawal, I'm be shoof your hand, or I'm be shoof the 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 object. Ida. I'm not be shoof. It's how are you interacting? So you can do. 
يعني انت you can think about the mixed reality method عنده the mixed reality is basically having multiple uh, hammers in the form right وهي عم بتشوف ال object وعم بتشوف how your hands are interacting بس obviously لما يكون عندك mixed reality you can interact using both of your hands but when you're using the phone you're gonna have to hold your phone with one hand and then interact with the other right so I would say that's that makes it a bit less immersive, but you can have it so that you can interact with it. If you can, I add one more point. Yes. I think it's one of the things you think. And the instructor is going to feel in the bottom side. How can the student can afford this? That's how we're going to do it. We're going to talk about the other thing. I think the speaker is going to show you. It's going to be a part of the thing that you can afford the other thing. And you can afford the other thing that you can afford the other thing that you can afford. يعني شو الاوبشن الثاني ممكن تسوي هالمعادلات في الارض؟ انك تبني بيئه كامله مغلقه تحاكي الفضاء. وتش از نوت امبوسيبل او تلس يعني ملايين دولارات. فمجرد ما تشتري انت نظاره ب 15 ب 20 الف درهم ممكن تبني هالانفايرمنت فيرتشوالي فهذا الطريقه نتكلم في الكوست افكتف من ناحيه من ناحيه النظاره من ناحيه الاختبارات يعني من ناحيه اللي بدها يعني مش سيميليشن يعني كشركات يعني مش افراد فقط. <تصفيق> لكن الشق الثاني اللي انت تتكلم فيه ككوست النظاره نفسها في مقارات العاديه اللي هم الناس تشتريها هاي حق الجيمنج والاشياء هذا معقول وفي مقارات اللي هي حق البزنس هاي انت تتكلم يعني انت ممكن توصل 20 الف او 30 الف ولكن تعطيك اللي هي المكس رياليتي والاشياء اللي هي سو ادفانس حتى ما تصلح للافراد العاديين فمن هي انت تتكلم الكوست افكتيف يعني من ناحيه لانه في قارب في موضوع التدريس فانا صعب في التدريس انت تاخذ حق الطالب انت تقول مثلا 15 الف مو شرط لا لا مش شرط يعني انت تتكلم هاي انت بتكون في لاب عندك لاب واحد ممكن في 20 او 30 نظاره بس مو شرط حتى الجامعه تشتريها في بعض المرات ممكن يكون سبونسر شيء عن طريق مايكروسوفت او شيء من الاشياء في دعايه او تعاون بين الشركات وبين الجامعات بس مستحيل مش موضوع لابتوب ان كل طالب يمشي معاه نظاره يكون لاب عادي يكون لاب وهالمشروع قاعد تشتغلون عليه في المدارس وزاره التربيه والتعليم والاستثمارات مسوين مدرسه بايلوت ظن في عمان انه يسوون فيها الميتافيرس لاب وايضا بعد في بروجكت في شركه تشتغل عليها البايلوت انهم بيسوون الميتافيرس لاب في اليونيفرستي وبعد في تعاون معاهم انه بني بالميتافيرس انفايرمنت يكون لاب يكون بني عندنا في الاي اي اوفيس فعادي تطبق مش لازم يعني عادي كم من هاتسن يعني هو موجود فاللي اللي وقت اللابي والجروب جروبات عادي تصير وكمان اللي يساعد إنه فيه البروفيسور هلا I will pour you an application on the Hololens and I'll be sharing it with you guys هلا before we proceed to that I would like to Thank everyone who joined us here today, whether that be remotely or physically. And if you want to learn about mixed reality, augmented reality, VR, you can um, uh, join the Metavera community. And there is a QR code over there that you can see. That would also contain the uh, YouTube channel as well, where you can see this recording. So. Let me know once that's done, and we will proceed to how the professors would be able to share the experience on what they're seeing. Okay? So, let me just give me one second. Okay. Hello, see this uh, application where you can uh, live 
stream what is being seen على القناة. So as I'm in photon. So you guys can see that I am king over here. Now, how did you open up? That is interesting. Ah. Uh, so here, for example, we have an engine. So we can uh, say, for example, that if a professor wants to explain about an engine, they can go the engine and then interact with it. They can move it around. They can. Okay. Yeah. So they can move it around and then explain this part and so on and so forth. Right. And they can also resize it as they would like. Let's say I'm going to place it over here. And I want to bring another component. Let's say I want to bring this component. Can I move it around? OK. Cool. OK, so this is an example. As I said, you can move it around. Now let's look at another application. So today we have seen multiple or various applications that you can use mixed reality in. So there's, oops, there's another one about uh, the space as well. What's the it's name? called surfaces. Oops, it's right there. So this one is about multi, about planets. Okay, so for example, we have this example over here. And as you can see, uh, we talked about the mixed reality where you, there's a feature we can, we can have a bounce control. So you can hold it and zoom it in and zoom it out, right? And then resize. And this would show us a more immersive experience. OK? Hold up your flat palm to view the menu. So these are multiple things that you can interact with. You can uh, put in your scene. And then you can interact with bubbles. <laughs> so yeah. And then you can have multiple other things that you can also interact with. And yeah. Where this one moves it to ice. Who would like to see what other options we have? Here were two of the first uh, people on the leaderboard. Yes. Hamadou Abdullah, who wants to go first? What? I think it's a Okay. 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 You can see multiple options. So, is this fine? Okay. Okay. So, is that tiftah You have multiple options that you can choose from, multiple surfaces that you can choose from. Pick the tiftah that you want. You have to go to the other side. You are literally pressing a button. Where is it? You you slowly press a button. Okay? Tamam. Hala, you wait for the entire object to be loaded onto your scene. Hada li zama. Fik through handle object. And then you interact with it. Hala, as a bit that you hold it, you hold it like this. Yeah. And these are multiple objects that are flying around. So you can basically hit them. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. If you want to try a different object, you can open up the menu. Okay. 
just okay. It's the last time uh, with shuf in her hand, and then you open up the menu. Last time, hazel ida kujah. Eighty days, wala. Eighty days, wala. Ah, hala. I would say it's the delay would be bein al hayu hay which is uh very normal i would say because that would basically depend on the uh internet connection so that is totally fine okay so you have an object <laughs> okay you can actually hear it if, if you don't mind me okay <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So I guess you can try one more purpose and we shall give it to the next person. <laughs> Oh, this one is fire. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay. okay, who's the next person who uh, was on top of the leaderboard? You don't want to try it? No, I'm fine. All right. Okay. Uh, let's, there, there is another application. Let me just double check. There's the playground application where you can play a piano on there, which is really nice. Uh, and I would choose this time one of the girls to come up. Whoever would like to volunteer first, raise his hand. Yes, colors. I thought you were raising your hand to actually try it. Yeah, hello. Oh, yes. wow. But obviously, if you want to actually experience it, come and put it on and then you see it. Okay, there. The piano, for example. Okay. I can move it around wherever I want to. And I can play. Who would like to try? Yalla bana. Yalla bana. You guys would not always like have this experience yes. with the hollows. <laughs> One time. So, yeah. Anyone, yalla. Yalla bana. Yes, sad. Okay. Okay, so now we have two people. Let's see what happens. Come on. So right now we have a piano that you can do it. You can we stand here. So, yeah, you press on the button. Perfect. Exactly. Then I take the captain headset. Okay, by the way, I piano, you can actually hear the sound of the piano. If you want to uh, spawn a different object, you can open up the menu. There's a humming bird that you can spawn on. And then, and then you can experience it. You can see what it is. So open up your menu if you want to put in a different object onto the scene. Is it accurate? No, what? Is it accurate? In terms of what? Uh, well, the, the keys are like further apart, so it's not to have accuracy in terms of you actually pressing the key. Then. <laughs> It is more or less. Again, you can experience it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that is the immersive part of it, where you actually see the people as well as the object in the spot. 
So, okay, so that is the hummingbird. So if you can see it there in the corner, it will basically come to your hand. Do you see the bird coming to your hand? Yeah, I can look for the Yeah. Okay, but then it can lift your hand. And then it will come climb to your so It's so pretty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you like to try the next one or? Hey, you can, I believe, move it around. There's like, well, okay. <laughs> Look at the game and case just connect to pop them. So you need to look at it and just case connect. Okay. So hi. But then uh, you interact with it using your hand, you're going to have to interact with it using your hand. I wonder if we can make it so that we can hear you as well. <laughs> yeah, we cannot hear it on our end. Okay. 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 Okay, watch this. 
هلا جربي Oh, that's a very cute bird. Okay. All right. Uh, in terms of the people who are joining us remotely live, we are going to uh, finish the workshop over here. People are just experiencing the mixed reality applications on the HoloLens, and we hope to see you in the next workshops. Thank you. What, what kind of different options do you have here? Yeah, to show up. Yeah.